see if they'll come up. I just stay still. Maybe they'll come up. Oh. You can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> if I was just to jump up suddenly, they would jump back. And then if I just stood here quietly or sat here quietly, they'd gradually come up to me. You know, they can either be kind of in seek mode or in fear mode. If I make a lot of rapid motion, then that tends to scare them. If I stand up, they'll, they'll, they won't come up as close. If I lay down on the ground, they'll, they'll uh, lick you. Animals are attracted to new things. New things are both scary and attractive. Move my foot. 20 years ago, when I designed the um, center track restrainer system, you know, which is be was being put in all the large meatpacking plants, I got kind of thinking, oh, I've just designed a system that they're killing cattle in the world's largest meat plants. And I was standing on this catwalk looking over this whole big sea of cattle underneath me. I got to thinking, those cattle would have never been born if we hadn't put the bulls and the cows together. Those cattle would have never have existed at all. We bred them, we've got to treat them right. Now, beef cattle have got the best life. They're living outside. You know, all beef cattle, regardless of whether they go to one of the specialty markets or they go to the regular supermarket, uh, spends at least half its life outside on pasture. And there are some problems with some of the intensively raised animals, with the egg layers and with the pigs, and there's things that need to be corrected. Now, you certainly don't want to have a chain of wiggling like that. People, you know, why do I have to keep talking about wiggling chains? I've talked about wiggling chains for 35 years. Why do I have to keep talking about them? Because people don't take them out. It's like they don't see it. Cattle always tend to go back to where they came from. So when I bring them into the crowd pen, uh, as they come all around the full 180 degrees, I'm taking advantage of that tendency to go back to where they came from. That's a natural behavior of cattle. And then the other advantage of the curved chute is, is as the animals enter it, they don't see the people standing around the squeeze chute waiting to give them vaccinations. <laughs> Signed that book? She signed this book. What do you think of her? Right there. She's amazing. She's been an amazing inspiration. I work with horses and uh, people on the spectrum. And she has helped me understand autism more than just about anybody else. Because she sees it through the eyes of animals and kids, and, and it's just incredible. Okay, and this goes to Jake. I noticed a young boy who was autistic. He came up and he was looking at Temple like she was a rock star or a, oh, that, a movie there star. There really is that Tell attitude me. right now. Oh, okay. that's all yours. Okay. Temple was always a huge attraction and admired in the autism world. But since the movie, it's just become literally rock star status. When I was a little kid, I had all the full-blown symptoms of autism. This was 1949, and uh, you know, not much was known about autism. I had no speech, I constantly screamed, but fortunately, I had very good teachers. I had lots of hours of early intervention. My mother hired a nanny who spent hours playing turn-taking games. Me and my sister, we got to teach these little kids turn-taking. Now, the movie does an absolutely fantastic job of showing how my mind works visually and the sensory problems and the anxiety. My name is Temple Grandin. I'm not like other people. I think in pictures and I connect them. I, I know my system will work because I've been through it a thousand times in my head. I can see a shoot just as a cattle will because that's something my autism lets me do. The cattle will go through a series of solid curves and the floor is solid too, grooved. The shoot gets smaller, but the cattle won't mind. They don't, they don't see any danger. They think they're just getting into another truck. The stairway leads them gently upwards. The floor becomes a conveyor. A rest rises up to meet their chests so they're comfortably carried. They'll be very calm. Lawanda starts. Lawanda So it would be 5.30 to do, um, do a remote uh, talk, and I could get my PowerPoint sent in. And, and what time would the evening meeting be? Yeah, bye. Just, just.
just quickly, Temple, since the film, just quickly, um, has the workload doubled? Or? Yes, it has. It definitely has doubled. So what's going to happen when it comes out on DVD as well? Well, I don't know. Do you think you might need a secretary? Well, I already have a secretary, but I find that it's easier for me to um, uh, do my own calendar. It's just a whole lot easier. Hey, Temple. This here is Red Harris from uh, Cattle Magazine. Very nice to meet you, Mr. Harris. Yeah, oh, Red, he can't make it. Okay, in the movie, you showed Claire Dane before I took um, antidepressant medication, and I was nervous. Like, hey, I would have loved to have done, done without that 20 years of having those horrible nerves. Mm. That was like being in a constant state of stage fright all the time, a constant state of, you know, imagine if this airport was full of poison snakes. You'd constantly be going, well, I'm out of that post, you know, just be... It would just be horrible. And that's helped that, of course. Oh, yeah, made it go away. Hi, this is Temple Brandon returning your call. How many days a week would you be on the road? Five and a half. Five and a half? Yeah. On the road a whole lot. Oh, hi, this is Temple Grandin. I'm returning Andrea's call. Hi. Oh, hi, Andrea. I'm fine. How about yourself? I couldn't believe it. Just couldn't believe it. You know, Claire, I mean, really deserves it. And you know, and then there's all the other ones. I've got to look up all the things. I think one of them set design. And I have to say that that's one of the ones I'd really like to get because my dip that would win an Emmy then. <laughs> yeah, and these are some of my awards over there. And those right. are the awards that don't go on the wall. Right. And the wall awards I've got over there. This is from the, uh, the uh, Meat Hall of Fame. This is the uh, director's chair back from the movie, and those are two pins that Claire wore in the movie. This came from Australia, and he's made in Australia. And I got him from Australia. And one of the things I've liked to do when I go to another country is get a little animal to bring back home from each country. And these are livestock, um, livestock uh, handling and welfare textbooks. This is Proving Animal Welfare Practical Approach. This is designed for people that are going to be implementing uh, animal welfare These programs. are all for professional people. Yeah, these are for professional books, strictly. And this one right here, Animals in Translation. This book is sold o over 300,000 copies just in, in, in the U.S. alone. And then, of course, I've got Thinking in Pictures. Yes. Which is... Uh, Thinking in Pictures is, uh, you know, now that's tell me about my, that. What's that's that about? my main autism book. You know, this originally came out in the, in the mid-90s, updated in 2006. And this is the book where I interviewed other people and I found out that other people thought differently than I thought. So, Temple, but there was no one to tell you that other people didn't think like Well, you. I didn't no, know no, until I wrote no one, no, Thinking in no. Pictures and I started asking other people about how they think. And then that's when I found out that my thinking was really, really different. You know, gradually I get more. I got more and more insight. What into a great how, advantage! How my thinking was different. You know, the thing is, to solve problems in the world, we need to have different kinds of minds. Temple, what you went through as a young person, particularly in school, of growing up, very important news of kids bullying you. And did you manage to get rid of that? That that insecurity that well, that would have caused. It was a, uh, it was really bad. I mean, teenage years were the worst part of my life. I was absolutely, completely miserable as a teenager and was teased. I was called workhorse and bones and buzzard woman and all kinds of bad things like that. And, you know, and the, and the refuges I'd have away from teasing were things like the horseback riding and, uh, and the science lab. You know, the students doing those activities were not involved in the teasing. This is why it's so important. We get the quirky kind of kids involved in the shared interest thing. Computer programming, robotics, uh, art, band, drama club, journalism, all of those special interest things. Mm -hmm.